Hey guys, this is Sean Ray with Sean Ray Realty, and today we're going to be sitting with Mrs. Holly Glover, and she is going to be going over all the details and answering all your questions on what it's like to be a first time Airbnb home buyer, and also all the details about her current Airbnb that we're sitting in that she's going to be selling at the end of this month. So, Ms. Holly, thank you so much for meeting with us. You're very welcome. I have a couple questions, but the main one that I'm really curious about, and I'm sure everyone else is curious about, is if you have such a successful Airbnb, then why in the world are you selling it? Yes. So, you know, as life goes, kind of unscheduled, uh, my clinic got moved to a different um, part in like lower south, south, south Dallas to uh, Waxahachie, Texas. So in order for me to buy a home there and to kind of establish myself in the community, which is really important when you're in medicine, um, I needed to be able to, you know, have the cash to be able to do that. So that's why I'm having to put it up. It yeah. pains me. It pains me. But it's the way life goes. It pains me too. Like I'm, whenever we sold this house to her, uh, we were looking for a while. We found this house. It was a beautiful house. And, um, and every time I, I sell a home that's an Airbnb investment, I still always do this, even though it makes sense that it would make sense, but still, you're crossing your fingers, you're hoping it works. And when she got in here, it was she's sending me text messages as like zero vacancy, and she's just killing it, making money her first month, and just, uh, which I wanna talk about that for a second. So when you got here, what was the thing that separated you from other Airbnb investors that made it to where right out of the gate you started having zero zero vacancy? You just had killer occupancy right out of the bat. Sure. Right out of the gate. So a little personal. Um, you know, I had a friend who ended up needing significant long-term care in a hospital. And whenever she was going through the process and her family's having to come up and help her, there was zero places to stay for the family. So because she was my roommate, her mom would have to sleep on our couch. Um, there wasn't great options. So the reason why I was interested in this property is because it's literally right down the street from UT Southwestern Medical Center. So I kind of figured this would be an opportunity to not only um, start a business, you know, kind of get into the Airbnb game, but then also provide a really good service for my potential clients who are your long-term care um, folks. And that is exactly who my first um, Airbnb -er was in this property. It was somebody that needed long-term care. They had to go for daily chemo and they needed something that was close. They needed something that was, um, accessible to the medical center so that if they needed to get there immediately proximity absolutely mattered so i kind of had an inside view of from the medicine side of how um the extras when it comes into getting care like a home absolutely matters so you say that uh the proximity was really a big factor for why you saw some success for out of the gate so does that mean that you think that everyone in dallas should buy next to a medical center or do you think there's other options and opportunities in different parts of dallas oh no i definitely think there's great opportunities all over dallas that was just a specific niche that i knew needed there was a need there and i could fulfill that with this property but i mean i'm so close to the airport it fulfills that niche um, you have traveling nurses, um, which goes back to the medical center um, aspect, but traveling nurses, um, resident docs that are coming in for like a rotation or whatever, who would need a little bit more long, long-term stay. But then also I've had several people book the property that have also been in town for Texas OU weekend last weekend. And people that are coming in over the Thanksgiving holiday because their their kids live close to here. So they rent it out for a week because they want to provide Thanksgiving dinner for their kids. So no, there's absolutely, more aspects of this specific property that are not just medical center related. And I absolutely know that there is need all over the city. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what was, when, let's go back, let's reverse time a little bit. Mm -hmm. And when you started looking, which she was one of my favorite clients because she just said, whatever works, just let's do it. And I don't, oh, let's talk about that too. She never actually saw this house before she bought it. Like she, she did a final walkthrough, right? Was that the first time you saw it? No, it was after closing. After closing, so she just said, hey, find me a spot. This is her first ever home that she bought for Airbnb investing. And I was like, this one seems it will be work. It, it just trust me. And she's like, all right, I trust you. And then she only saw it after she she actually bought the house. And so what was that experience like for you? Uh, a little surreal, but it you, if you trust who you're working with, then it's fine. Like, and I, I trusted you. I mean, you've had successful Airbnbs, you know the game. In fact, your first property, I remember you telling me, you know, probably wasn't in, you know, 
it wouldn't have been an ideal property, but you turned it into something that has done extremely well. And then after your success, you went after another property. So it was something that I knew you had experience in, your friends have had experience in. So you came into it with the experience that I needed because I had zero. I'm not, if I don't know anything about the game and I'm trying to get involved, then I want somebody who is in the game and is doing it well. So, I, you know, I trusted your opinion. I. You know, you came and did a little video for me. You know, it was a good, it was a good setup for us. Mm -hmm. So if you were to go back in time before you put an offer in this house, before you bought it, what uh, would you have done differently? Like now that you know what you know, and then what did you do that you didn't know was great? Like say for instance, like, ooh, I'm so glad I did that. I didn't even know how great that was or whatever sure. it happened to be. So, I mean, the whole reason why I'm having to, to, to sell the property is, is exactly what I would have done different. So I had to put in a large amount of money because this was an investment property. So you, you know, the amount that you have to put down is much different than if you're like a first time homeowner or if you don't any, own any other properties. And so that is something you really have to consider, but it, it, it's, why I'm in, it's why I'm in the situation I'm in. So knowing that, um, I might've structured it a little bit differently to where Maybe I unloaded the other property first and then bought this, so I had to put a lower down payment so I wouldn't be in the situation that I'm in. Gotcha. Fair. And then what are some hidden, like uh, like I didn't even know how genius I was or something like that. Like um, I didn't. Maybe, maybe something like the fact that you didn't have to deal with construction or right. so, anything like that. Yeah, so when I moved into this house, they had just remodeled a lot. So there wasn't a big project that I had to be involved with. Um, so one of the hidden things about, you know, just owning a home in general, if you don't own one, whatever amount of money you think it requires to kind of get a property up and going, double it. <laughs> just because you don't know. I mean, like I had to get the plumbing up to code. I had to make some um, electric changes up to code. You know, I had to do some things that were not done, even though the house looks amazing on the inside. There are some of the bone structures that you needed. Um, those are considerations that you don't you don't really anticipate. Um, now, granted, I thankfully my you know input for the invest investment stake was not very much, but I could see how if you didn't really comb through that um, and get costs up front um, before you you know kind of go through your option period, then it could be it could get you in a bind. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's really like the benefit of the turnkey versus the, the renovation because a lot of times people are like, man, if I can just put that force appreciation in there, I can really use this to do some cash out refinances then use that to reinvest in the future. And then if you're buying a property that's already renovated as is, like this one was, then you're not making as good of a deal. You're probably paying an extra ten, twenty thousand $20,000 over, sometimes a little more. But is that ten to $20,000 that you saved worth the five, potentially five months of headaches and dealing with contractors and then maybe the contractor just ghosts you and you don't get ever, you have to find another contractor, you just have to deal with all this stuff. And think about the time, those five months, if she just would have got a turnkey property, sorry by the way, I should have told you this, but uh, if she would have got a turnkey property, that's five months of revenue that she would have made that would have just probably pushed her past the point in which the renovations would have got her. So anyways, keep that in mind whenever you guys are looking at it. This is not traditional real estate, it's Airbnb investing, so the rules are always the same. But thank you again so much, Miss Holly, yeah, for you. taking your time yeah. out of your day to talk to us today. If you guys like this kind of content, you know what to do. Like and subscribe. Mm, and make sure to leave a comment. All right, see you guys on Saturday. <laughs>